Hey guys, happy Monday. I hope everybody's doing well out there. Um, yesterday I did a, a kind of an impromptu live stream and uh, was hopefully helping somebody out with a Plex installation they were doing. And uh, we just kind of trailed off from there and talked about some different things that people might like to see on the channel as far as new applications. And one of them that got brought up was something called Bookstack. And I actually just started using Bookstack recently for uh, note taking and that sort of thing. And so I thought I would just take a few minutes today to show you how to install Bookstack uh, using, uh, well, a stack that we're actually gonna get from linuxserver.io. We're actually gonna pull it from hub.docker.com, but it's the uh, Linux server IO uh, stack that they've created. So uh, with all that being said, let's jump over to my desktop and take a look at installing Bookstack. So this is the Bookstack uh, website. This is their homepage. It says simple and free wiki software. Uh, Bookstack is a simple, self-hosted, easy to use platform for organizing and storing information. And uh, I've only been using this for about a week or so. And uh, I've just been taking some very basic notes, uh, but it has made it very, very easy to actually categorize things and, and keep things organized in a way that makes sense to me. And of course you can configure it and make your own setup. There'll be, uh, more convenient for you as well. So this is the demo that you'll see when you log in. This is like the demo that they've got set up and you can see that there are uh, some drafts going on here, some recently viewed stuff, uh, <clears throat> recently updated pages and recently, a uh, recent activity just in general. Um, <clears throat> they've got a dark mode, which I kind of dig, uh, looks really good if you're into that kind of thing, which I, I am. Um, you know, up here you can categorize things by shelves if you want to do that. Uh, you can you can obviously then take it down a further step to have books, uh, all kinds of stuff to really be granular about that. So then if we open up, say, like this book, uh, then we can add a new page, a new chapter. We can set permissions. We can delete things. Uh, they've really done a good job of making this super intuitive and user friendly. So uh, just kind of wanted to give a bit brief introduction. I've had a lot of requests for uh, more explanation about what a a uh, specific application or container is before jumping into the installation portion of things. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what uh, Bookstack is. And with that being said, now let's go ahead and actually install Bookstack. So this is the Linux server Bookstack uh, page on hub, hub.docker.com. So if we scroll down, uh, of course, there's a bunch of information in here. Um, but if we scroll down, you can see that this should be supported on uh, x84 as well as ARM processors. So that's good. Uh, here they've got a script that you could just run in SSH. And then below that, they've actually got a full stack uh, that we can copy and paste. So we'll go ahead and copy that. Uh, we'll go into stacks and we'll click on add a stack and we'll paste that in there. Now, uh, this is pretty straightforward. So let's actually give it a title or a name first. So I don't forget that. Now, so we've got uh, the first few lines are pretty standard. Uh, this is just introducing the stack. Uh, or the container into the stack. Below that, we've got P PUID and PGID. Uh, we will need to, or we we'll want to change those uh, based on the credentials that our account has here in Portainer. So what we need to do um, is actually open uh, uh, an SSH program. Uh, you can do this through uh, Windows Command. Uh, I like to use PuTTY. So use whatever SSH program you're you're comfortable with. Um, and then I, th oops, 192.168.1. I'm pretty sure it's 24. Oops, and of course it always drops it into the wrong window there. So we'll go ahead and log in as root. And again, I'm looking for uh, the, the group ID and the user ID of uh, the account that I'm logged in with, which happens to be admin. Uh, you can see that up here at the top right. So if I just type in ID, oops, ID space admin, uh, we can see that my UID and my GID are listed here. That's 998 and 100 respectively. So I'll change this to 998 and I'll change this one to 100. And then we need to go down and do the same thing. Now this, this first one is for the actual uh, application itself. We will need to go down here and change this in the database uh, container as well. This is gonna launch two containers uh, at once. There's gonna be the application and the database. Um, and they've done a really good job of making sure that this works very, very seamlessly. So, um, so if we scroll back up here, uh, we can see that the database host will be Bookstack DB. Uh, the user will be Bookstack. The database password, so this is the database user. I should specify that. Uh, database user is Bookstack. Database password is your DB pass. And the database, uh, database, the actual database name is Bookstack app. Now, you can change these passwords if you want. Um, if you're going to have this available to the general public, you probably should. Um, but if you're just going to host it locally, 
it's up to you. Uh, for the sake of this video though, I'm going to leave it as is. Now, the one thing I should say is whatever you change this password right here to, uh, you'll need to scroll down and change um, this right here as well. Those need to match. If they don't match, the, uh, can, the, the application can't talk to the database. So make sure that uh, everything uh, matches between the database and the application itself. So uh, we've covered all of this. The next thing we need to do, or the next thing we need to do is actually talk about the volumes, uh, where we're going to store the configuration uh, for both the, the application and the database. Um, and so what we need to do in that case is actually jump over to open uh, Media Vault. So we'll go to uh, panda.local, we'll go to port 81, because that's where I've got it here. So what we'll do is we'll go to shared folders and we'll say add a new shared folder. I'm going to call this config. Uh, this is where we're going to put all of our configuration stuff for any of the applications that we install. Uh, then we'll go ahead and select uh, our hard drive. I like to set my permissions to everybody can read and write. We'll click save. Then we'll go over here to SMB CIFS. Uh, we'll want to make sure this is enabled. If it's not, uh, click it so that it's enabled and click save. Uh, once that's done, then you can go to shares, click add. Uh, we're going to select the config or the config file that we or folder we just did there. Comment you can leave blank. Public should be only guests. And then we can say save, and then we can click apply, and then say yes. So we'll give this a second to create that folder, and then we'll go back over to the shared folders to grab the absolute path of that folder so that we can put that into our stack. Okay, so now we can jump over to our shared folders. <clears throat> Uh, here we can see the absolute path. If you don't see this column right here, you can hover over any of these uh, column headers, click the drop down, go to columns, and toggle relative or absolute path on and off. Of course, we want it on. So what I'll do then is I'll right click. I'm going to go to inspect. If I drag this out just a little bit here, here you can see that in the code. I'm just going to double click it and copy it because I'm lazy and I don't like to type. So then we'll come back over to Portainer. We're going to paste this path right in here. Now again, this is for the application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say books. I'm going to append this with book stack, like so. And then I'm going to copy this. And then I'm going to come down uh, to uh, this volume down here. I'm going to paste that in there, and I'm going to append this with DB for database. That way, all of the files and the database will be in one central location uh, in this configuration folder uh, on the server. So that's why I like to do uh, the configuration folder. Uh, just have one central repository of all of my different uh, application configuration files. So uh, next thing we need to do, and really the last thing we need to do, is change the time zone. Uh, I'm not in London, so. Uh, I'm going to change it to America slash Denver. Uh, I'm pretty close to there. So uh, then if we go back and kind of review everything here, uh, we've got our application. Uh, this, the, we've got the environmental variables that will tell it how to connect to the database container. We've got our volume. We've got our ports uh, set at 6875. Uh, below that, we're just going to restart it unless stopped. That way, if it gets a hiccup, something goes wrong, it'll automatically try to restart so that there's no downtime and you don't have to try to go back in and restart it. If you're, say, you're away from home and it crashes and you've got this accessible, we always want to make sure that unless stopped is uh, the option there for the restart. Um, and then it depends on Bookstack DB, uh, which is the next container right below that, uh, where we're actually going to host the database uh, for Bookstack. And of course, we've got our user ID and our group ID below that our root password, our time zone, all of this database stuff. Then we've got our volumes. Again, we're going to restart unless stopped. And that's it. Like that's all we need to do here. So then we'll come down and we'll click on deploy the stack. And we'll give this a minute or two to download and configure everything. And then we can take a look at the logs. OK, so now our uh, container has deployed. So we can come in here. And we can then go ahead and go to the book stack. Uh, line here and go to logs. And right now it's actually going through the process of creating the database and configuring things uh, so that it's still in the process of setting up, I guess is the best way to say that. Uh, this will continue to update uh, for the next little bit. But once we see a, a spot that says something to the effect of services.d done or complete, uh, we'll know that everything is completed uh, and we can actually jump over uh, to the port that we set up there and access our new application. Okay, so it says services.d is done, so that's good. So then what I can do is I can go over here 
change this to port 60, uh, 785, I think. Crap, I don't remember. Uh, let's go look at our stack real quick. Uh, yeah, 6875. There we go. Uh, six, oh, nope, I did that backwards. 6875. And then we'll just go ahead and hit enter. So uh, our email address here is going to be admin at exam example.com. And then uh, password. Oops, maybe I lied. Let's go ahead and see. I believe it's in here somewhere. Oh, admin at admin.com. Darn it. All right, so we'll do admin at admin.com and password. And here we are logged in. Uh, if you remember, if you've watched my video about uh, how to install Nextcloud, uh, there was a spot in that video where I actually had to go through and set up the, the database and connect everything and all of that. And I really dig what the guys at linuxserver.io did here. Uh, they made uh, all of the environmental variables automatically connect. So there was no chance for this to go wrong. They did an amazing job at setting this up and making it very, very user-friendly to set up here. So uh, if we come in here, we can, uh, you know, we can take a look at our books. Uh, if we want to, we can create a new book and we could call it, um, you know, video ideas. Uh, we could actually, let's do a uh, li darn it, lip sum, because uh, I'm lazy. I'm just going to copy some, some lib sum text in there, um, and then we'll go ahead and say save book. Uh, you could, if you wanted to, um, we could edit this and we could give it a cover image. You know, we could by upload an image and uh, make that our cover image for the book. We can add tags. So if we wanted to have several books that are all like categorized by, uh, well, category, I guess, or topic or whatever, uh, we could put tags in there and sort by tags later on. Um, so we can go ahead and click on save book or cancel in this case. And then we can add a new chapter and we could call this, uh, you know, raspberry, oops, pie uh, ideas. And then we could paste that in there as well. And then we could add a new page and we could say uh, Raspberry Pi idea one. And then let's grab, uh, let's grab a couple of paragraphs out of here, like so. And we can go ahead and paste that in there. Um, so this is actually super easy to use. We can then click save. And now we've got, it says up here, page saved. If we go back here, uh, we've got uh, recently updated pages recently uh, viewed, uh, all of our recent activity, all of that is in there. And it only took us just a few minutes to set up a uh, book stack on our server so that we can uh, have a really slick interface for keeping notes. Okay, guys, there you go. There's how to set up book stack uh, on Open Media Vault using Docker and Portainer. Uh, at this point, Open Media Vault's just kind of in my brain, uh, but mostly we did Docker and, contain and Portainer here uh, to set up book stack to, to have a good slick, uh, slick interface for keeping notes uh, that, that's super easy to search, create new notes, create new books, create new chapters. You can categorize things by shelves. They've done a really cool job of, of building this application. And I've actually been using it for the past couple of weeks uh, to, to keep notes for myself, uh, both for video ideas, as well as notes for specific videos. So uh, that's how I've been using it. Uh, if you guys are gonna use this, let me know in the comment section down below how you would use uh, this application or how you plan on using it if you're going to install it. Uh, and that might give other people ideas on how they might wanna use an application like this as well. So I hope you found the video helpful. Uh, if you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. It would help me out a bunch. Uh, while you're down there in the comment section, uh, there will be some links uh, both for uh, more details on setting this up. Uh, if, if I need to do that, I probably will. Uh, there'll be a, a link to a blog post where you can grab uh, more information about this if you want to. Uh, there'll also be a couple of links on how you can support the channel. Uh, one of them will be a coffee link where you can do a one-time tip. There's also uh, Patreon if you wanna become a patron. Uh, there's a couple of different levels of access there that will give you access to a members or to a, uh, a patrons only Discord server where we can hang out and chat. Um, you can ask questions, uh, get tech support, whatever kind of stuff you want to do in those private chat rooms on Discord. Um, there's also merch, but uh, that's still shipping kind of slowly, at least for the time being. So you may want to skip that just for now, unless you're watching this in the future. And then have that, go for it. Uh, get yourself something kind of weird or whatever. Um, but I think that pretty much wraps up everything I wanted to say here. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.